Imagine this is a particle in the quantum world. It can exist here or here, not in between though. The length between the two points is actually the Planck length. The Planck length is equal to the gravitational constant times the Planck, reduced Planck's constant divided by the speed of light cubed and take the square root of all that. So it is a very ridiculously small length. It is actually equal to 1 times 10 raised to minus 35. That's approximate. And if two particles get closer than that, then they could potentially form the smallest black hole possible. Another way that the quantum world differs from the classical world is that we cannot have precise measurements. In classical mechanics, we can know the exact position and the velocity of an object at a precise point in time. But in quantum mechanics, that is not the case. In quantum mechanics, the, the uncertainty in the position of an object increases if the uncertainty in the momentum of the object decreases and vice versa. That basically means I can either know the position very precisely or the momentum very precisely. And momentum and velocity are interchangeable because momentum is mass times the velocity. This is closely related to the wave particle duality of quantum objects. An object behaves like particles sometimes and as waves other times. When it is behaving like a wave, we can see many phenomena, such as the double slit experiment, where electrons and photons demonstrate wave like properties. The Planck's constant is actually the constant of proportionality between the energy and the frequency of a photon. Frequency is an inherent property of wave, but photons also act like particles. Quantum objects exist as a probability wave where the highest peaks have the highest probability of the particle being there. And whenever it interacts with the external world or an observation is made, then the wave function collapses and the wall exists somewhere else. Now here we understand that the amplitude of the wave corresponds to the position. If this is very concentrated like here, the highest probability of the particle being here is the highest. And the probability being here is lower but still here uh, and it is much more than perhaps here. Now the momentum or the velocity of the particle corresponds with the wavelength. So the distance between the two peaks and in this case where the, uh, the amplitudes are very different and they, have, they are very uneven, the wavelength is actually very ill-defined and because of that the momentum is very uncertain though the position is quite clear. In this case where the momentum or the wavelength is well defined, the position could be anywhere in these peaks because they have the same, almost the same amplitude. So the position is very uncertain, though the velocity is quite clear. So that covers the three principles of quantum mechanics. First, the discreteness of the quantum world, the uncertainty of quantum measurements, and the wave-particle duality of quantum objects. There is not a single point of measurement where the effects of the quantum world kick in and the classical mechanics is thrown out. The, the equations of classical mechanics are actually very, very good approximations of the quantum equations when brought at the macro level. When we de delve deeper at the level of the electrons and photons, we realize that it is simply not accurate to ignore the preciseness of quantum models. Subscribe if you enjoyed the explanation.